Hi, I'm Kendra from Good Cookery, and today I'm making raw milk manchego cheese. Alright, so now that we've strained the milk, I'm going to gently warm it up for the first step of cheese making, which is culturing the milk. Culturing the milk for this recipe means bringing it up to about 86 degrees, and then I'm going to add a starter culture. The second step of cheese making is adding the rennet, and renneting just causes the milk to coagulate into a big mass. And then the third step is cutting that curd into smaller pieces so that we can then cook the curd. Cooking is the next step. The fifth step is pressing the cheese. And I have a homemade cheese press that my brother made for me that I use. You can also buy cheese presses from cheese making supply companies like um, New England Cheese Making Supply. They have some nice presses. And then the final step of cheese making is aging the cheese. And if you're using raw milk and you're going to sell your cheese, you're required by law to age it at least 60 days. And I like to age my cheese at least 60 days because it just tastes good. So. so right now I'm still in that first step. I'm culturing the milk. I'm going to bring it up to 86 degrees because that's the temperature that the mesophilic cultures are happy at. Since this milk isn't pasteurized, there's good and bad bacteria in it. So all the steps of cheese making are designed to just help those good cultures take over. And the end product is something that is good for you and tasty. Alright, so we're just about to 86 degrees. How I'm warming this milk up, by the way, I forgot to mention, is the sink down here is filled with hot water. And I keep refreshing that hot water from the water that I'm warming up on the stove. So it's staying nice and warm and it's gradually warming up the milk to 86 degrees. You don't want to do it too fast, just nice and gentle. And we are just to 86, so I'm going to go ahead and add my starter cultures. I'm going to add first my mesophilic starter. And I'm not going to add a lot. It's surprising, it doesn't take much just like a sixteenth of a teaspoon maybe, just a dash. Just enough to ensure that the good bacteria are strong enough to take over. This is a direct set culture, and I ordered this from New England Cheese Making Company. And it's super easy because it's all set to go. It's just powdered form. You scoop it, put it right in, and you don't have to do anything. It just does all the work. You can also get mother cultures that have to be propagated though, and that's a little bit more work. I don't really have time for that, so I prefer the direct set. The mesophilic culture that I use is MM100. They're labeled by different codes. And then this is the thermophilic starter culture. This is TA51. And I'm just going to get a pinch of that as well. Again, like a sixteenth of a teaspoon. Just enough so that we can be sure the bad bacteria will not win. That would be horrible because all your work then making this cheese and all the months of aging would all be for naught and you would have a bad cheese in the end. That would be sad. So I like to use those cultures just to ensure that it turns out. Alright. That's well mixed so I'm just going to set it and cover it so nothing else gets in there. And now I'm just going to wait 45 minutes. It's been 45 minutes and we are now ready to add the rennet to the milk. So I have rennet here that's been diluted in water and the amount that you use will vary based on the kind of rennet that you have. So with this rennet, it's a half teaspoon diluted in a half cup of water. I'm going to just add this into the milk. So I was about to add the rennet, but I see this happens often if you're using whole milk with all the fat still in it. 
the cream has risen to the top during that 45 minutes where it was setting still. And so what I want to do is just mix that back in before I run it. So I'm going to just stir it gently here. Get it all mixed back together. And then it's mixed in a little bit better and I'm just going to stop the motion of the milk as best I can before I add the rennet here. Okay, so the milk's basically still now. And I just sprinkle in the diluted rennet over the back of the spoon. I hope it's spread around really nicely. And then to mix it in, you stir with an up and down motion for about a minute. So just stir, stir all around and get it mixed in. After a minute of stirring up and down, what you want to do with full fat milk is just top stir for about a minute more. And this is just where you use the top of the spoon or the back of the spoon to gently stir just the top layer of milk. And that is so that the cream doesn't separate out while the rennetting process is getting started, just to help keep it all mixed in together so all the cream gets into the curd. And then once this is stirred for about, I don't know, half a minute to a minute or so, I'm going to stop the stirring, cover it, and let it set for about half an hour. And during that time, the milk is going to coagulate into a big mass. And when that curd gives a clean break, then we're ready for the next step of cutting the curd. So this is the mass, the curd mass. It's been sitting for about half an hour and it's ready to cut. And I'm going to show you what it looks like and how you know that it's ready to cut. I will start by making a cut on the curd and then I'll just stick my finger in and lift up and you see how it breaks cleanly there. It's just a solid mass and that's how I know the curd is ready to cut. If it would have been mushy like yogurt, for example, then it wouldn't quite be firm enough. So I'm going to go ahead and cut the curd. This is a nice long curd knife. It reaches all the way down to the bottom of the pot. And I'm going to cut straight across. And the cuts should be about half an inch apart. I'm not very accurate with that, but... Okay, and then I'm going to go ahead and cut the other direction now, crosswise. All the way across. And cutting this big curd mass is going to allow me to stir it to cook these curds. And we're actually just releasing whey from the curd. And that's an important part of the process. Now I'm going to go through and cut at an angle, sort of like this. Again, trying to keep about half an inch distance between cuts. And then finally, the other direction or so. I'm not too precise. And that's good enough. And now, after I've made these initial cuts, I'm just going to let it set for five minutes. And then we'll move on to the second phase of cutting the curds. The curd has now been setting for about five minutes. And you can see it's quite firm. It holds its shape when I pick it up. But they're still pretty big, so I need to get them down a little bit smaller. And the next step will be just stirring the curd with a whisk, and this is kind of a huge whisk, but it's nice because it reaches all the way to the bottom of the pot. And I'm just going to gently stir this for about 30 minutes and help break the curd up into smaller sizes. Breaking it 
into smaller pieces, again, helps the curd to release more whey. And the whey is this greenish tinted um, liquid that you can see in between the curds. And releasing that allows the curds to firm up a lot more. And then it's the nice, firm, cooked curds that eventually will press into the actual wheel of cheese. After about 30 minutes, the curds should all be broken up pretty small. And they're even starting to firm up a bit. And if you take a look at it, it almost kind of looks like scrambled eggs. And it kind of feels like scrambled eggs, too. So that's where we want to be. And I'm going to switch to using a spoon to stir it. And you want to just keep stirring it, otherwise these curds will stick together. And that's called matting. They'll stick together in a big clump, and we don't want that. We want them to stay separate individual curds. And at this point, I need to begin cooking the curd. Right now, our temperature is 80. It's dropped down from 86 to 80. That's OK. That happens, especially in the winter time, like right now. The temperature sometimes drops a lot. So I'm going to begin warming these back up. And I have some nice warm water that I'm going to add to the sink. See, it's kind of steaming hot. We don't want it to be too hot so I didn't add too much water. We want to add just enough so that you can raise the temperature about two degrees every five minutes. And we're going to keep going like that, raising the temperature two degrees every five minutes until the temperature is about 104 degrees. If you remember back towards the beginning, we added the thermophilic starter culture, and that culture will be pretty happy at 104. So we're going to start cooking the curd here. Keep going. It's going to take me about an hour to get up to 104. So keep gently stirring. All right, we are now at 104 degrees, and the curds are looking really nice. They're a lot firmer now. They hold their shape. So you can see, and even if you squeeze them a little bit, they still hold their shape. So that's nice. That's right where we want it. And I'm just going to let it sit now. I'm not going to stir it anymore. So the curds will sink to the bottom of the pot. The whey will rise, of course, to the top. And then after about five minutes, I can pour off the whey, scoop the curds into my cheese mold, and then we're good to press. Okay, we're ready to scoop out the whey. You could also pour it off, but this is a really big pot, it's kind of heavy, so I'm just going to scoop it out until I can make it a little bit lighter. And I don't just throw the whey away, I put it in the garden, I use it as compost. It's supposed to be really good for plants. should be sterilized just to help out the good bacteria. Make sure they don't get overwhelmed by any bad guys. Okay, so that's all set. And now I'm just going to scoop the curds in and fill it right up. Some cheeses use salt at this point. You would kind of break them up, it's called milling, milling the curd, and then you would salt them and put them into the mold. But for this cheese, we salt it later. We actually, after it's done pressing, we put it in a brine. So that's where the salt content comes from. All 
I'm just going to fill this right up, and then I'll take you downstairs to the cheese press and show you how that works. So now the mold is filled with all the curds, and I'm just going to wrap the top with the rest of the cheesecloth. It's just a disc that will press down on the curds and give it a nice shape. All right, let's go down the basement to the cheese press. So this is my cheese press. I'm just going to set the cheese mold right here on the shelf. And then this arm will swing down and be the weight to press the cheese on top. Now the weight of this arm is significant, but it's not quite enough. It's about nine pounds. So I need to add a little bit more weight to the end of the arm, which I just hang this bucket on the end and that adds enough weight. I need about 13 pounds. And that's gonna press like this for 15 minutes. And then I'll come back and flip the cheese. So I'll be back in 15 minutes to show you flipping the cheese. Time for the first flip of the cheese. So I'll just take the weights off, and a lot of whey has actually been pressed out through those holes. So I'm just going to pour it off. I have a bowl down here and drain that extra whey right off. Now we have to rewrap the cheese and flip it so that it can get pressed evenly all around. So I'm just going to take it out, here's the cheese, let me pull the cheese glass off so that you can see it, and it looks a little bit more like a wheel of cheese now. So I've got it flipped over and on the other side, got the cheese glass back, set it back in the cheese mold. And then put the follower back on. And put the weights back on. So that was the First time I flipped it, so it's going to press for another 15 minutes. Then I'll come back down, flip it again, it'll press for 15 more minutes. After that, I'll flip it one last time and press it for 30 pounds for at least 6 hours. I usually just press it overnight. And after that, then we'll be ready to brine the cheese. The cheese has now pressed overnight. And I'm going to take it to the final step now of brining it. So just take it out of the mold. Might be kind of hard to get out. Unwrap it. And this is going to set for I like to brine it for 24 hours in a saturated salt solution. What you have here, and this is just water with salt in it, and it's got all the salt that it can hold. And set that in there so that it is completely covered, and I'll let that set for 24 hours. And then I'll show you what it looks like. The next step after this, it's going to age for two months in my cheese cave, which is here in my refrigerator with a temperature control unit. So after two months of aging here in the mid-50s, low to mid-50s Fahrenheit, then it will be ready. And I'll show you, I have a wheel that I already made two months ago, so I will show you what that looks like. This is a manchego that I made two months ago, and it's been aging in my cheese cave. And as you can see, it's a little bit fuzzy. That's okay. You just wipe it off with uh, 
I have a cloth here that's dipped in salt water, and that helps kill the mold. So you just wipe it off. And at first, when the cheese is young, when you first start aging it, it gets moldy more often because the cheese is a bit more moist. But then as it ages, it dries out a little bit, so you don't have to clean it as often. So as you can see, there's a nice pinkish color. That's really good. I have a nice mold growing in my cheese cave, and it's kind of a reddish mold. And it gives the cheeses a really nice flavor, too. So that's it. Raw milk manchego cheese.